Okay, so today we will wrap up string matching and we are going to see string matching using fast Fourier transforms. Okay, some there has been a lot of interesting work in the last few years or through this. <coughs> so, recall where we use phosphorio transform, we used it for or what is this transform? We used it for polynomial multiplication. So, we are given some polynomial And we want to compute the product and we know what it is, right. So, what is this? This is, <coughs> so what is the coefficient of x power i? i goes from 0 up to 2 n minus 2. What is the coefficient of x power i? So, it is some j going from 0 to i, a j into b i minus j. Right. This is the product polynomial because how do you get x power i? You pick some a j here and pick some b i minus j here and you multiply and you get x power i. So, a naive way of computing this product would take n square time, but we managed to do it in n log n time and I remember how we did? How did we do in n log n time? Right. So, we evaluated these two polynomials on um, two nth roots of unity, which we argued can be done in n log n time using divide and conquer. And then computed the product point wise. So, we get the value of this product polynomial on the two nth roots of unity that you know n log n plus linear and then we inverted it back from the point value representation. We managed to get these coefficient representation and we argue that that is also like another transform like evaluating some other polynomial in nth roots of a two nth roots of unity and we managed to do all of it in n log n time. So, what we are going to assume is that I can get this, these coefficients for all these values of i given this two polynomials, we can get this in n log n time, right. So, now I am going to use this for my string matching problem. So, what is the string matching problem? We are given a text T and a pattern P <coughs> we want to find all occurrences of the pattern in the text right. This is what we have seen, we have seen an M plus N algorithm using KMP, we have seen uh, ways in which if if the pattern is given to you in advance, we can pre-process it so that for every text that is coming in linear in the size of the text, we can say whether this all occurrences of this pattern, we can build an automata or we can uh, compute what is this pi function. And the other case when if the text is given to you in advance, we can pre-process it and build a suffix tree so that for every pattern we can check find all occurrences of the pattern in time proportional to the length of the pattern plus the number of occurrences, okay. So, we have seen all these three cases, good, okay. So, but we are going to just come back to the same problem, but now I am going to use some algebraic approach like this. You know, our running time will be slightly worse than whatever we have seen, but we will see that for some more general problems, 
this approach is you know yields good algorithm <coughs> okay so for now i'm going to assume that my pi's and ti's is part of this finite alphabet which are actually numbers okay so if it's not you just give some mapping like if it is you know a c g t you say is 1 c is 2 g is 3 t is 4 and then map it okay so our alphabet is 1 to sigma okay so then um p occurs in t starting at position i if the following happens right summation p i or p j minus <coughs> t i plus j what can you say about this So, in my, in my text t, these are numbers remember every character is actually a number suppose my pattern occurs starting at position i and okay, this is p0 p1 pm minus 1 p0 minus ti plus 0 plus p1 minus ti minus 1 plus this sum is 0 right. I also want the converse to be true, but that need not, right? Why? Yeah, you can do some cancellation, right? Because if this is 0, it is because maybe it's somewhere it was plus 5, and somewhere else it was minus 5 and it cancelled. So, how do I make it? How do I make the converse to be true? Add coefficients, hmm? do a mod something nicer yes I just do this right square it then you know these are all positive numbers how can they add up to 0 everything must be 0 right so it is if and only if ok. So now everything boils down to computing this this sum ok what is this this is summation j equal to 0 to m minus 1 p j these are all numbers remember plus ok so I want to check whether this number evaluates to 0. This does not depend on i at all. So, I mean I am going to check this for every position i because if I want to know all occurrences or even find any occurrence I have to do this for every i. So, for now let us fix i. This does not depend on i it is just a function of the pattern. So, I given the pattern I can sum the squares and compute it ok order m time. this depends on i and so how much time will it take so it is a sum of some m quantities of the text squares hmm? so it's order m for a fixed i but if i want to run it over all i hmm? yes so it's not really mn right because it's it's what i'm computing the sum of this squares and suppose it you know it doesn't serve my purpose i shift and I want to sum the square sum of the squares of this but that is same as saying subtract this square add this square so it is constant time for every i. So this can be done in order m time this this is one time this is order m plus n for every i you know for all i okay. Now let us look at this. 
this has something like this kind of a flavor right. So, somehow I want to come up with some polynomials on this p and t and say that when you do this multiplication this term not just for one i all the i's right what, what have we done we have you have shown that these coefficients for every i because I know the coefficient of the product polynomial now all that can be done in n log n time right. So, I want to be able to compute this for every i in order n log n time if I manage to do that you know for all i ok. So, this we will discuss how that is going to be done, but if I manage to do that I have an n log n algorithm plus m to find all occurrences of the pattern in the text ok. Not very efficient because we know we have an m plus n algorithm, but I will tell you slight generalization of this problem where this will be useful ok. So, let us talk about how can I compute this. So, what sort of polynomial should I set it up? So, that for every i this thing comes out as computing my f of t right. Okay, so, this is i minus j whereas, I have i plus j. Hmm? Reverse p ok. So, what is my p of x? Ok. So, a 1 x power minus 1, a 2 x power minus 2 and p has only a m minus 1 x power minus m minus 1. That is basically saying 1 by x power 1, 1 by x square and so on, but if you do not like 1 by x you can always say it is n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus m minus 1 let us say ok. And let us write my t of x is t 0 plus t 1 x plus t 2 x square plus da 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 t n minus 1 x power n minus 1. Then what is this? P x into T x. Yeah, again you can go. So, you can assume that it is actually a polynomial of degree n minus 1 by adding some 0 times the next polynomial blah 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 up to it's n minus m and it will go all the way up to times x plus 0 right this is n minus m n minus m plus 1 n minus m plus 2 up to n minus 1 and so on ok. So, what will this be? So, if I want to know the coefficient of ok let us say I want to know the coefficient of n plus i may be easy to compute. Ok, let us see what is the coefficient of x power n plus i. Um, so, I pick a i from here, a j from here which, which contributes n minus j. So, I have to pick j plus i because that this j would kill the minus j and then I need a plus i. So, it is x power n plus i. Okay, I do not know about this sum, I may need something else here because there, I, mean, I will have coefficient from 0 to, to n minus 2, but suppose I care only about coefficients. 
you know I going from 0 to m minus 1 or even n minus 1 plus some more. So, I am just splitting it up into coefficients going from 0 to n minus 1 and this is n 2 to n minus 1. Okay. So, I have just taken this product polynomial which is degree 2 n minus 2. But the important thing is that this is exactly what I want, right? So, not a j p j. Yeah, so, this is p my given pattern. So, p j t j plus i is what I want. Ah, so, how far do I go? I guess I should go up to m minus i because Mm -hmm. So, does it is it right? So, coefficient of x power n plus i where do I get from? I, if I pick a p j that is going to contribute x power n minus j and this is going to contribute x power j plus i. So, the whole thing will give me n plus i. Okay, So, that is good p j t j plus i comes and I claim that it is actually you will go from 0 to m minus y and that is what you want or m minus 1. So, so when i is 0 I want coefficient of x power n. So, what is the coefficient of x power n? Well, I pick p j which is n minus j. Yeah, because I have only up to this point anyway, n minus m minus 1. After that, it is all these coefficients are 0, so it does not matter. Yep. Um, what happens when j is 0? I want to put t m minus 1 sorry, when j is 0, t i would give me x power i and uh, why is it not, ah, okay, oh, p 0 x power n, thank you, yes, yes, I will go up to x power n, yeah, because then to n power i, I should get p 0 and here t i, okay, so net net all I am saying is that if you want to compute something like this for every i, you set up this polynomials, two polynomials of degree up to n and compute the product and look at the coefficients of the product, some of the coefficients, whatever I know they pop out, these terms pop out as some of the coefficients of this polynomial. Okay, so, we can compute this whole thing in n log n plus m plus n plus m. Okay. Okay, so, now suppose I am going to generalize this problem, I have uh, more general matching where suppose this each character I have a do not care symbol in both in my pattern as well as text and the interpretation is that I can match it with anything. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So, suppose now I am looking at a more general problem where I have a text and a pattern. I want to find all occurrences of the pattern, except that both pattern and the text have this some some of the characters are don't cares, which means that they match with anything. Okay. So, now I want to turn this matching problem into something like an algebraic thing. Okay, so, I am looking at the generalized matching problem where I have do not care symbols on the text as well as in the pattern and they can match with any character. So, now I am looking for all occurrences of this pattern with the text where these patterns and text has some do not care symbols. Okay. So, now I want to say something like this. Yes, so what, what can I say? So, first of all, I have to give some number to do not care symbol, right, because this, these are some numbers and I am going to look at it as some numbers. So, I am going to give a value of 0 for do not care symbol, right. But now this will not work, right, because I might have one of this as a do not care symbol and this may be a symbol and the difference will be something, but I really want that difference to be 0 because that do not care symbol matches. So, the following trick does the job. Right? I multiply by Pj times Ti plus J. So, now if one of them is a do not care symbol, this product will be 0 anyway. Okay? So, there, I mean there are two interpretations of this. I think let us see if this is a more convenient thing. I could simply say Pj prime Ti j plus prime where these primes are 0 if it is a do not care symbol and it is 1 otherwise. I will use that interpretation later for some other problem, but you could also think of this as a just the value of the Pj and Ti plus J and if any of them is do not care symbol at 0 otherwise some something non 0, it just corresponds to the value of the alphabet. Okay. So, now this is clear right again. Um, because these are all positive numbers again. So, you have sum of positive numbers adding up to 0 that can happen only if every term is 0 and a term here is 0 if this is 0 or one of this is 0. So, if one of this is a do not care symbol then fine otherwise if they are not do not care symbols they align then you know that that is a match. Okay. So, now when I expand it out. I have so let us say it is I am going to write it as Pj and Ti plus J. So, none of this is order m now, but everything now looks like another some f of t computation, right. It is p j cubed t i plus j, t i plus j cubed p j and here it is p j square t i plus j square. So, you write down the corresponding polynomial now instead of coefficients being t 0, t 1, t 2, it will be t 0 square, t 1 square, t 2 square or cubed or whatever and again you can now compute it in n log n time. Okay. So, this was actually a, and it I mean this problem had a long history. Uh, people did not get this very far. It was until not until 2007 this, this algorithm was found. Before that there were some little complicated algorithms which had some n log m log sigma running time and you know it was made simpler and finally, this was a like a one shot algorithm, you just compute this a 50. So, all of these are, 
So, this is so all of these are n log n right because it is think of it as a polynomial of degree n two polynomials of degree n and you are multiplying instead of the coefficients being ti is you will have this ti cubed. So, this is also so overall order n log n. So, do not care what so what is the interpretation can match with any character. Okay, so, there is a simple trick to improve the running time from n log n to n log m. Okay, we will look at that. I mean, it works for both these problems. This is m because m is much smaller than n for us. Okay, so what the here is an, an attempt which really has a little problem, but we'll fix it. So suppose I have, I have this text string which is of length n, and I have a pattern which is of length m. So, first I match you know look for a match. So, I let me divide this string into blocks of size m. Then try and match this here okay, using the algorithm we have seen whether it is with do not care or without do not care. And if I, so now here I am just matching a pattern of length m with the text of length m. So, this we know we can do it with m log m and now I shift this and match with this and match with this. So, it will be m log m times n over m that is n log m. Okay. Not okay. Is that okay? Have you checked every alignment? Yeah, so what we have not checked. So, this, so I what about you know an occurrence of a pattern starting from here and ending here? I mean, this kind of a thing you have not checked here, okay. But there is a simple fix for that. So, what can we do? The idea is, yeah, 2m does the trick. So, what we will do is we will divide my text into overlapping strings of length 2 m. So, I take 2 m here, then I look at this 2 m, then I look at this 2 m and so on. So, now you match your pattern shifting you know testing your alignment all the way, but you know remember this thing we managed to do in n log n time to find all occurrences not just one occurrence right. So, here I can check all occurrences of this pattern in this 2 m sized location in m log m time and since they overlap. So, I have covered every alignment. So, now I shift this again and check this. So, that would be like n by 2 m times 2 m log 2 m. So, actually n by m because even though the sizes are 2 m, but they overlap. So, it is n by m. So, overall I managed to get it n log m. Right? So, this works for both um, the do not care thing as well as for um, exact match. Yeah, so which I find this you know a cute application of 
this FFT computation. So let us do one more application and then I will finish. Maybe I will have short lecture today. So let us say, so you know, these, these things are very well studied. There is a lot of string matching is something, you know, because of its applications in biology in Google, there is a lot of, there is a whole conference, at least a couple of conferences devoted to string matching. So I, we have just scratched the surface um, and then looked at some basic algorithms. So one other thing which we normally care about is um, mismatch. Suppose I want to allow a few mismatches. Okay. So now let us say um, ah, I should not have erased this. Uh, I think I can find So given T find all occurrences where P has at most K mismatches. I mean, even here you can talk about um, the data structure version of it, where a given a text preprocess it, build something, so that when a pattern comes, I want to find out not just whether it matches, but I want to also find occurrences where it you know mismatches with a few locations and so on. So that's also another problem. We we won't look at it. Okay, so. I mean, let us see an example, right? So, and if my pattern is and if my k is like 2, then for example, this pattern matches here, you know, with with two mismatches. So, there is a mismatch here and there is a mismatch here. Okay. And it, you know, here is another occurrence of this with these two mismatches. Okay, so, you want to report all such things. So, again we will, um, I am going to just discuss the simpler problem of one mismatch. Um, So, you can, I mean, you can think of some nice naive solutions where maybe you will try all possible strings. So, what are we looking at? We are looking at um, alignment or occurrence of the pattern or somebody in its Hamming distance k, right. Hamming distance is, you know, set of strings where which has at most k positions where they differ. And I want to look at all occurrences of that. So, uh, one naive solution would be generate all of them and then try for exact match, which we know how to do it, right. That will be like an overkill. But we will see how we will use FFT's idea to uh, solve this for k equal to 1 at least. Let us say I compute first 
all alignments, right? So, I know how T i plus j minus P j whole square. Okay, let me also add multiply I mean if you have do not cares then you may actually want to multiply by this terms as well, but let us say we do not have do not cares for now. Okay. If you have do not cares you can just do this little multiplication and deal with it. So, we know that if a 0 of i is 0 then what do we know? That there is a match starting at position i of the pattern right. Okay. I am going to compute a 1 of i. So, we will assume no do not cares. So, a 0 y is 0 means that there is a miss, there is a match and if a 0 i is not 0, then so what is this giving right. So, so sup suppose there is a mismatch at exactly one location ok. Suppose there is a mismatch at one location. So, I have my text and starting at i, i plus 1 up to i plus m minus 1 and my pattern p 0, p 1 up to this. Suppose there is a mismatch at exactly one location that means that except for that location this term would be 0 everywhere ok. And in that location, I will get this coefficient basically, right? Starting from i plus j minus 1. So, when j is 0, do you want to say i plus j minus 1 or i plus j? So, suppose there is a mismatch at lth location. at p l, then um, what do I get? I mean what would a 1 i be right? If there exists mismatch at exactly one location and that is the lth location. So, when j is 0, I will have i minus 1 something, j is 1, I will have i and so on. So, when j is l or on p l, let us say, so whatever. So, when you have l here, this would be i plus l minus 1, right? Into whatever the difference is is what this a 1 i will turn out to be. Yeah, so, so now if I do a 1 i by a 0 i, I get this i plus l minus 1 right, because a 0 i because there is 
mismatch exactly if there is a mismatch exactly at one location a 0 i would again cancel out everywhere and except for this the difference square at the lth location alone will be the sum. Here it will be that difference square times i plus l minus 1. So, when I divide a 1 i by a 0 i, I will get that actual position where there is a mismatch, okay. assuming there is exactly one mismatch. Okay. But if not, I have a problem, but let me write the algorithm and then we will we'll see what. Else. So, is this clear that if there exists a mismatch at exactly one location and let us say at position p l, then I can find it by, by these two numbers. Right. I mean these two are exact you know um, okay one needs to carefully argue that this can also be computed by your FFT but that is you know it just adds up some coefficient here. So, I will let you figure out that you can actually compute this in n log n time using FFT or n log m time. Okay, so, here is my algorithm for i going from 0 to n minus m. If a i equal to 0, then I just note down the fact that there is no mismatch. It is actual alignment. Then I am going to just write down B i equal to sorry A 1 i, what do they call sorry A 0. So, I need to now ensure that if there is more than one mismatch that I will be able to detect it somehow from this. Okay. So, how do I detect it? Hmm? Yeah, these are the same coefficient, right? Yeah. What do you mean by I did not understand? No, I want to argue that I already have, I mean there is, there are various ways you can now do my check. Um, I mean one way I can do it is actually do a verification at this point, but that will be too expensive. Okay. So, um, Okay, but here is an easy check, right? If suppose B i is not equal to no mismatch, so you got some number like this, then can I, I mean there is something I can figure out from looking at a 0. Um, what can you say? So, I got some number here, right? I did, I did this division and I got some L. Now, I, I know that if there is exactly one mismatch, good, I get this position, but I might get some number even if there is more than one mismatch and I need to detect that. But if there is more than one mismatch starting at position i or, or if there is exactly one mismatch, what is a 0 of i? Suppose there is mismatch at position l, then a 0 of i is exactly t i plus l minus p l whole square. But if there is more than one, a 0 i would be much more than that, right, because it is sum of some positive numbers anyway.
it's okay which difference so so here is here is my claim if b i is not no mismatch if a 0 i is strictly more than T of i plus whatever let us call this some number l right or or b i minus 1 minus p of b i minus 1 or b i whole square. So, so b i is the position where there is a possible mismatch that is what I am guessing. So, now I look at that quantity, look at the difference square. If a 0 of i is strictly more than that, then I can say that there is more than one mismatch. If there is exactly one mismatch, then I that position comes up and this term is exactly that difference square because everything else is 0 anyway starting at i. So, the only way I can deduce that there is more than one mass mismatch is that this quantity is more than that. So, if a 0 i is greater than whatever that b i term minus p b i whole square, then I know there is more than one mismatch. Okay, so all this now again in n log n time I can um, n log m actually the same trick of doing this alignment with overlapping strings of 2 m would work. Yeah, so I mean here I am, I am assuming that, so I will just say compute a 0 i a 1 i for all i, right. this is this is my n log n step, okay. Okay. Okay, you are saying that the, denom the, the division by a 1 by a i um, is some strange number is what you are saying, right. It because it is sum of some position into the different square plus some other position into some other different square. Um, But that is ok, uh, ok. When I do the division, what do I get? I get ok, I see the problem. Um, Right, so this could be a problem, right? So what? So this is like two times something square. Maybe in some other fifth position, some other something square, there is a mismatch, and that number turns out to be this. But when I divide, I will get this square plus this square. So 
I may not even have a good integer number. That may be one check to say that it is uh, more than one. So, is there some other fix we can think of? Um, is the problem clear? Uh, I, yeah, I see. I see the problem. That because I mean. It is like maybe in the second position and fifth position there is a mismatch. So, you get this square whereas in this sum I will have only this square plus this square. So, when I do a division I am going to get some I may not even get an integer L. Um, I mean if I do not get an integer L I can immediately say there is. I think that you can ensure that it will lie between 0 and L minus 1. Why? Because you know, so this is some x square plus this is some y square. This whole thing is less than or equal to 5 into x square plus y square, right? Whereas this will be like x square plus y square. So, when you do the uh, division it will be between whatever it will be the maximum coefficient it will be upper bounded by that and then you it will work you think you take that integer and then test. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good observation. So, this may not be an integer then that is one check. But if it is an integer, we can first argue that it is at most between your position 0 and m minus 1. So, now you plug it in and check. Okay. So, now for generalizing this to k mismatches, you know there are some algorithms you randomly pick some k positions and then do look for one mismatch and so on and so forth, but I am not going to get into that. Okay, I think I will stop with this.